September 26, 2025. What looked like an ordinary comet suddenly erupted near the sun, its light leaping to naked eye brilliance, and its tail fanning wider than five uh, full moons, drawing global attention as C slash 2025 R2 Swan raced toward Earth far faster than predicted. In less than two days, the sun unleashed its fiercest flare in months, blasting a magnetic storm directly into the region Swan traversed, raising fears that this new visitor could create even greater cosmic spectacle and risk than the infamous 3 slash Atlas. As astronomers mobilized worldwide, one question echoed. Will Swan's approach ignite an unprecedented sky event or vanish without warning? The answer starts with the outburst that rewrote everything. September 12, 2025, Comet C-2025-R2, slash now known as SWAN, sweeps through its closest approach to the Sun, perihelion, at just half an astronomical unit, or about 75 million kilometers. That's closer to the Sun than Mars ever gets to Earth. In the glare of twilight, SWAN is a faint visitor, magnitude 7.4, slipping through the constellation Virgo. For most, it's invisible without binoculars. Even with optical aid, the comet offers little more than a dim, softly glowing patch, its coma barely distinct from the background haze. The tail, a slender ribbon reaching two degrees across the sky, hints at activity but falls well short of spectacle. A modest span, about the width of four full moons lined up side by side. The geometry at perihelion places Swan in a challenging position for ground-based observers. Its low angle above the horizon means thick air and solar glare swallow much of its light. Only the most dedicated astronomers, equipped with sensitive cameras and meticulous tracking software, can tease out its presence. The SWAN instrument aboard the SOHO spacecraft, designed to spot hydrogen emissions in deep ultraviolet, logs the first clear detection on September 11th. Vladimir Bezugli, scanning the data, recognizes a new streak, a telltale sign of a comet. Within hours, the Minor Planet Center confirms the sighting, assigning the official name C-225R2 Swan. At this stage, Swan's behavior fits the classic script for long-period comets. Its orbit, nearly parabolic, suggests a journey from the distant Oort cloud, a frozen shell encasing the solar system. The nucleus remains hidden, buried beneath layers of gas and dust. Photometric models predict a slow, steady brightening as it rounds the sun and heads outward. Early reports describe a greenish coma, typical of diatomic carbon and cyanogen exposed to solar radiation. The tail is faint, its structure blurred by the low altitude and lingering sunset. Observers in the Southern Hemisphere, Australia, South Africa, Argentina, stand the best chance of catching swan in these opening days. Most log it as a curiosity, not a showstopper. The numbers are clear. Magnitude 7.4, a two degree tail, perihelion at 0.5 astronomical units. No hint yet of the drama to come. For now, Swan is just another distant traveler, following the well-worn path of icy wanderers before it, its secrets still locked beneath the surface. September 26, 2025, the night begins quietly, but in backyards and observatories across two hemispheres, something unmistakable happens. Koichi Itagaki, scanning the sky from Yamagata, logs a sharp jump on his photometer, far beyond the expected curve. Hours later, Michael Matiazzo in suburban Adelaide confirms it. The comet's brightness has leaped nearly a full magnitude, vaulting from a faint 7.4 to 5.7, then 5.8. In practical terms, Swan has crossed the threshold into naked eye territory under rural skies, an event rare enough to set astronomy forums alight within minutes. For observers, the change isn't just a number. The comet's tail, once a modest streamer, now sprawls wider than five full moons end to end, over two and a half degrees across the sky. Even in city haze, binoculars reveal structure. A broad, golden dust fan, and a sharper, electric blue ion tail, both shifting night by night. 
Amateurs swap raw images and side-by-side -side processed frames, comparing jets and kinks erupting near the nucleus. Itagaki's own log reads, Swan erupted like a cosmic geyser. Tail now spans five moons. Matiazzo notes, Sky brilliance doubled overnight. Faint striae now visible even in suburban haze. The cause lies beneath the surface. Buried pockets of volatile gas, carbon monoxide, water, maybe even more exotic ices, have reached their limit. Solar heat cracks the crust, jets burst through, and the coma blooms outward. The effect is immediate. Not just a spike in brightness, but new features near the core, visible as knots and rays jays in high contrast images. Light curves posted in real time to global networks show the deviation from prediction. Each new observation becomes a clue to the comet's hidden structure. Within hours, the amateur alert network is in full swing. Telegram groups, X threads, and cloud based logbooks fill with fresh data, brightness estimates, tail measurements spectral hints of cyanogen, and diatomic carbon. Professionals join the chorus, shifting telescope schedules and prepping for rapid imaging. The comet's outburst has transformed it from a faint curiosity into a global event, a live experiment unfolding in the sky, inviting anyone with a lens or a keen eye to join the chase. Swan is no longer just a distant traveler. It's a spectacle and the world is watching. A single comet can paint the sky with two utterly different brushes. In late September, as Swan's brightness surges, its tail unfurls into a double spectacle, one broad, golden, and slow. The other, a sharp electric blue streak that seems to ripple and twist with every passing hour. These colors aren't just for show. They reveal the comet's inner workings, the physics of dust and plasma set loose by solar heat. The golden fan, wide and diffuse, is dust, microscopic grains blasted from the nucleus by jets of gas. Sunlight pushes on these particles, scattering them outward in a broad arc. Each grain, heavier than a molecule but still tiny, drifts along the comet's orbital path, lagging behind as the nucleus races ahead. Radiation pressure does the work here, sorting the grains by size, with the smallest swept farthest from the core. The result? A sunlit, slow-moving plume that glows warm against the night, tracing the comet's journey through the solar system. The blue streak tells a different story. That's the ion tail, made of molecules like carbon monoxide and cyanogen, stripped of electrons by ultraviolet light. These ions are at the mercy of the solar wind, a constant stream of charged particles and magnetic fields blowing outward from the sun at hundreds of kilometers per second. When these ions are caught, they fluoresce, emitting that ghostly blue glow. Unlike the dust, the ion tail points straight away from the sun, regardless of the comet's path, and it can snap, ripple, or even break off entirely if the solar wind shifts. Night after night, Observers note how the two tails respond to invisible forces. The dust tail holds steady, broad and majestic, while the ion tail dances, sometimes splitting, sometimes bending at sharp angles. Always see in flux. For astronomers, each twist and color change is a clue. Dust tracks the comet's past, ions map the sun's present mood. The interplay between these tails turns Swan into a living laboratory where light and matter reveal the invisible currents shaping our solar system. Across continents and time zones, the outburst transforms Swan into a global rallying point. As word spreads, telescopes of every size, from backyard Dobsonians in Cape Town to robotic widefields in Queensland, turn skyward, feeding a growing river of images and data. On September 27th, the spaceweather.com gallery logs over 300 submissions in a single night each frame capturing the comet's expanding tails from a new vantage point. Some observers, like 14-year-old Priya Mehta in Mumbai, use nothing more than a pair of binoculars and a digital camera, stacking exposures to tease out the faint blue filament of the ion tail from City Haze. 
Others, seasoned comet hunters in Chile and New Zealand, post side-by-side -side comparisons showing the tail's night-to-night -night changes, kinks, sudden bright knots, and even faint rays branching from the nucleus. The scale of participation is unprecedented. Telegram groups and astronomy forums become live control rooms, with users posting raw photometry, annotated timelines, and spectral hints in real time. A crowdsourced logbook tracks every brightness estimate, revealing the comet's unpredictable leaps and lulls. In suburban skies, even casual stargazers catch glimpses, often mistaking the golden dust fan for a distant contrail until the arc persists, glowing long after aircraft have passed. The comet's reach outpaces light pollution. In Sydney, a teacher sets up a lunchtime viewing for students, who gasp as the tail stretches across the schoolyard sky, wider than five full moons laid end to end. Professional astronomers join the chorus, shifting schedules at major observatories to document Swan's evolution. Data pours in from SOHO, ground-based telescopes, and an ever-expanding archive of amateur images. Each upload becomes a puzzle piece, helping to chart the comet's rapid changes. The international effort is not just about spectacle, it's about readiness. With the sun entering an active phase and a major solar flare brewing, the community braces for the possibility of a direct encounter between Swan's tail and a coronal mass ejection. Every observer, from first-timers to seasoned veterans, stands poised to catch the moment when solar wind meets comet and the sky writes its next chapter. September 28, 0843, UTC. The sun erupts with an M6.4 class flare, the most powerful in months, blasting X-rays and charged particles from sunspot region 4232. Within minutes, coronagraphs onboard SOHO and STEREO satellites confirm the launch of a fast coronal mass ejection. Its leading edge racing outward at speeds between 800 and 1,000 kilometers per second. The flare's energy output lights up solar monitoring charts worldwide, but this time, Earth isn't the target. Model overlays from the ENLIL the Heliospheric Simulator show the CME's broad front expanding into the sector of space now occupied by Comet Swan. Forecast teams at NASA, ESA, and NOAA scramble to update their projections. Solar ejections don't travel in perfect lines. They twist and billow through the solar wind, their true path shaped by magnetic fields and solar rotation. Analysts stitch together coronagraph images and real-time solar wind readings, plotting the CME's shock front against the known positions of planets, satellites, and for the first time in years, a comet with a tail stretching more than two degrees across the sky. Inside Mission Control, Slack channels fill with alerts. Dr. Rachel Pell at NOAA urges, run new ENLIL, focus on SWAN's coordinates. Dr. Juan Alvarez at ESA cautions, magnetic polarity unknown, prepare for rapid reconnection if BZ goes south. The best estimates place the CME's arrival in the vicinity of Swan's tail between 48 and 72 hours after launch, depending on the true trajectory and field orientation. Density projections suggest a moderate event, enough to disturb the ion tail, possibly to sever it, but not enough to trigger effects at Earth. For comet watchers, the question shifts from brightness and tail length to a more urgent countdown. What happens when this wall of solar plasma slams into Swan's charged tail? The global network of amateur and professional astronomers readies cameras and telescopes, prepping for a window when magnetic reconnection could play out live, in view from both hemispheres. The setup is complete. Now, the solar wind carries the next move. When the coronal mass ejection swept through Swan's sector, the sky became a plasma laboratory. Within 90 minutes, the comet's ion tail showed the telltale signs of magnetic reconnection. A sudden kink, a break, and then a glowing fragment drifting away at nearly 130 kilometers per second. Doppler spectroscopy from observatories in Chile and South Africa captured the velocity spike, confirming the plasma was severed and hurled into space by the CME's tangled magnetic fields. For the first time, Coordinated amateur and professional campaigns documented the event as it unfolded, 
with time-stamped images and spectra uploaded in near real time. As October 21st approached, Swan swept to just 0.25 astronomical units from Earth, threading the ecliptic under a new moon. The comet's tail, still recovering from its cosmic surgery, stretched across the southern constellations, visible from Australia to Argentina. In Nebraska, a high school astronomy club joined the campaign, braving freezing winds to synchronize their telescopes with South Africa's SALT Observatory. Their goal, parallax imaging, to map the tail's three-dimensional structure. By comparing images from opposite sides of the planet, they traced subtle shifts in the tail's position, early steps toward a full 3D reconstruction. Maria Vasquez, the club's student leader, posted, We watched the tail jump in real time. It felt like riding the solar wind. Meanwhile, a rare alignment played out overhead. As Swan passed its closest point, the interstellar visitor I Atlas reached superior conjunction, both comets sharing the same patch of sky as seen from Earth. The contrast was stark. Swan's riotous, ever-changing tail versus Atlas's faint, steady glow. Spectra from the Hubble archive revealed Swan's classic solar system ices. Water, carbon dioxide, traces of organics, while Atlas carried the chemical fingerprints of deep space. For a brief window, the solar system played host to both a native wanderer and an interstellar guest, their stories written in light, their differences mapped by a global network of eyes and instruments. On September 28, 2025, a powerful M6.4 class solar flare launched a coronal mass ejection toward the same region of space as Comet C slash 2025 R2 Swan. Within days, coordinated observations from amateur and professional astronomers captured the comet's rapidly changing tail, stretching more than five times the width of the full moon. Despite extensive data, ranging from real-time images to Doppler spectroscopy, the precise effects of the CME on Swan's ion tail, including tail severing or magnetic reconnection, remain under scientific review. As Swan passed just 0.25 astronomical units from Earth on October 21, 2025, its spectacle was documented by a global network of observers. The simultaneous alignment with Comet 3i Atlas offered an unprecedented opportunity to compare two rare visitors. Today, key questions persist about the details of solar wind interactions and comet evolution. Yet the worldwide response to SWAN has shown that space remains a dynamic laboratory, where new discoveries depend on open data and global collaboration.